Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. All right, cool. So how you guys doing out there? Uh, I know it's been a long time uh, since I've done a video. Um, I've been a little bit busy, unfortunately. Sorry, everybody um, that really watches my stuff and appreciates my videos. Uh, I was telling you guys I was going to do another Manny Pacquiao video. Uh, I was really, really trying to find uh, another game he played because there's a lot of pictures online of games like, you know, in a moment of him playing. But unfortunately, you can't get an actual full game just from a picture. Uh, you just get a literal snapshot of a position. Um, so this is, I think, I believe the only other game that exists uh, unless Manny Pacquiao has a game written down or somebody took a video, but I can't find any. Um, so this is a game that he played. Um, this is the uh, General uh, General Santos. I believe that is the city. Uh, General Santos, let me flip over. Yes, uh, General Santos City is a, a city in very southern uh, Philippines. Um, so some of you guys that watch my stream, uh, my, my, my YouTube might be from there. Um, so um, in, in a first attempt, I'm going to I'm going to try to speak as much as I possibly can. Uh, but I'm actually I actually have a little bit of Cebuano uh, written down. Um, I speak mostly Tagalog on my stuff um, when I'm speaking another language other than English. Uh, but Cebuano is the language I'm pretty sure um, that they speak uh, in General Santos City. Um, so it's a slightly different dialect. It has a lot of similarities, but uh, I'm going to make an attempt to speak uh, pretty much more Tagalog and Cebuano than I ever have in my entire life right now. So I'm going to start uh, to my people that speak Tagalog. Magandang umaga, magandang kapon, kamusta aking maga kabagan, masaya akang mukita kang muli. Uh, appreciate you guys coming by and stopping and looking at my videos. Maraming uh, uh, salamat po uh, sa na na nude. Uh, uh, ing uh, a king maga video uh, and a king maga channel. Uh, appreciate you guys coming by and stopping by very much for that. Uh, and all of the people that do speak Cebuano, um, I can say kamusta ka to you because that is hello and how are you. Um, but I will say uh, ma uh, ayong uh, butong, uh, buntong, buntong. Yeah, uh, my ayong buntog. Yes, that is right. Or uh, my ayong hapon. So forget afternoon. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what I got. I got a uh, you know I say a king maga kabagan when I'm saying my friends in Tagalog, uh, but it is a kong maga hagala, I believe. Uh, for Zabuano, anybody who's out there that speaks Zabuano, um, feel free to let me know um, if I didn't do it uh, you know completely correctly. Uh, uh, let me see. I think the other thing that I say here, uh, Malaga Young Puck Dining Sa A King Channel. Uh, you know, for anybody who's just coming from for the very first time, I appreciate you coming by and looking at my channel. Uh, get my thing hooked up here. Cool. All right. If you guys are ready, spoke a little bit longer on that one. Um, but if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have for this game here. 18. All right. All right, so we got knight to f3. So we start off with a ready type situation. Uh, we have d5. Uh, we got d4. We got e6. Uh, bishop to f4. So we have knight to f6. We got e3. As you guys do know, Manny Pacquiao is white, uh, and he has a friend who's actually off camera. Um, he kind of comes into the camera just a little bit, but I'm not sure who it is. If anybody knows who he's playing, feel free to let me know, and I'll change the thumbnail. Um, but, um, you know, this is just a, a pretty typical position. Um, you know, we're starting to kind of get more into sidelines. This isn't normally kind of like how, you know, like a knight f3 d4 situation is really played. This is more kind of like a London -y type of situation or something. So, um, this is not like, you know, like high level theory, but you know, of course, Manny Pacquiao is not a professional chess player. Um, but you know, he's done good so far. You know, he's got his knight and his bishop out. Uh, he's ready to get his bishop, his other bishop out in the play, get castled, stuff like that. This knight has come out here. So, you know, they both set up their structures and stuff in the middle. Uh, so they're doing good so far. This is where we actually kind of start to, you know, shift over a little bit from like mainline theory. We see C5, um, which uh, which is not, is not too bad. But then we see C4 by white. Uh, and this is more of kind of like a terrash, semi-terrash type situation. Um, and so, um, you know, right now, like I said, we did have the ready uh, flipping over. Um, let me see what it was, what it says. It says Queen's, Queen's Pawn opening Zucrator. Um, so that is like pretty much, I guess what it's saying. But to me personally, um, as a D4, I mean, as, as somebody who plays D4, uh, you know, this looks more uh, similar to like a, you know, like a Tarash or semi Tarash type situation. Uh, when you have these pawns meeting in the middle like this, um, with the exception of the bishop to F4, because I don't really do the bishop to F4 thing. Um, but anyway, um, so that's kind of where we're at. 
uh, in this situation. And so we see knight to c6 by uh, black, and we see pawn takes d5 by white. So this is up to this point, we're still in standard theory. You know, this is uh, this has been played before, so this actually has been played at the professional level before. So they're still kind of following, you know, mainline stuff. Uh, and pawn takes uh, d5 um, was the move that is in the database that was played. Interestingly enough, uh, knight to d5 um, is actually much stronger um, in the position, um, and it gives black a pretty nice advantage. Um, mostly because whenever you are playing d4 and you're setting up this type of a structure with the e3 d4, um, you know, anytime a knight does capture here on d5, you usually have the ability to push e4 to knock the knight away. Um, but unfortunately, in this particular position, that just completely just hangs the bishop. Um, so that is the only issue with the particular situation that you're in right now. Uh, so, of course, you're not going to be pushing e4 in this case. Um, and, uh, you know, if... Um, if the bishop just went ahead and went back, you are going to have some problems because your king is still stuck in the center. Uh, you're going to have pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop to b4, uh, and you have knight to d2. And now, unfortunately, you've disconnected your sight of the uh, d4 square with the queen. So now black has the ability to take on d4 and then pawn takes d4. Um, and as you guys can see, now you have an isolated d pawn, which isn't the end of the world, uh, but it does give you a little bit of a disadvantage structurally. Uh, and this knight can move at some point. And so you just, like I said, you have issues because you are not castled. Uh, so going back to what we have, we have pawn takes d5. We have bishop to e2, which is the novelty of the game now. Um, and so we see bishop to d7. We have castles by white. We got pawn takes d4, knight takes d4. We got bishop to e7. We have knight to c3. And we have castles by black. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting in this position. And I'll put the video in the description so that you guys can see the entire game. Uh, they're in the middle of a game at the beginning, and so they kind of start playing the game maybe about eight or nine minutes in. I'll get the exact time, and I'll put it down there in the description. But Manny Pacquiao after Castles, he actually goes knight takes d5. <laughs> and Y'all probably looking like, wait a minute. Isn't that wrong? Yes. <laughs> it's wrong. Um, now, basically what he does is he makes this move, and he clears the pawn off, and he almost puts the pawn down, and he realizes, wait, that hangs my knight completely. So then he like undo undoes the move. So they're not playing touch move. They're just kind of playing a friendly game. So he allows him to go ahead and take this, this move back. Uh, so what he actually does uh, in the actual game after that is play rook to c1, which is really good. Um, that's that's pretty much the best move in the position. And we see a6 by black. We got a3 by white. Rook to c8. And then we have knight takes c6 for, uh, for, for Pacquiao. Now, the only thing about the situation um, is that this does allow... Um, black to actually no it kind of doesn't no it kind of doesn't it's it, it, it's good uh for, for for white um but generally when you're thinking about capturing something um you have to be careful because right now black does have a weak uh you know isolated deep on um so it's a, a lot easier to attack so probably something a little bit better was like knight back to f3 because you're fully controlling this square um so you can build up against this pawn uh and it's very possible that you might be able to take it off the board um, so you just have to think about these weaknesses. And whenever you do take knight takes c6, uh, you are kind of reinforcing your, your structure. So you have to be careful when you're doing certain trades. But in this particular situation, pawn taking b6 does set up the ability to take on c6 with the, uh, actually on a c6 with the or a6. No, b takes. And then there. Uh, so the bishop can take on a6 in this particular situation uh, and just win an entire pawn. Uh, but Manny Pacquiao actually misses that, uh, and he just goes bishop to e5. Uh, and then after bishop to e5, we see queen to b6. Uh, and white's uh, advantage is getting pretty sizable, even though it kind of looks like, you know, uh, black is being attacked uh, on b2. Um, b4 is what Manny Pacquiao actually played in the game. Um, but you actually have the ability to go knight to a4. Uh, and then the queen, uh, they have to retreat uh, after b4, something like a5. You have bishop back down to d4. And then queen to c7, then knight to b6, and you're going to be winning, you know, a nice little bit of material. You definitely want to get a bishop off in this type of position because this position will open up. Uh, so you do want to get, you know, their bishop off of the board um, so that you can have the bishop here in that type of situation. But we see b4 that came, and then we see bishop to e6. We got knight to a4. Uh, and as you can see, you know, Manny has, a, you know, a nice little bit of, like, structural understanding uh, because he's trying to put this knight down here on this uh, c5 square. Uh, and then also, you know, trying to prevent the pushing of it and stuff. So, you know, getting, you know, the queen attacked at the same time. So uh, the queen comes back to b7. We see bishop takes f6. And this is very good uh, because he's basically putting the question to his friend. Are you going to take back with a pawn and damage your structure around your king? 
or are you going to take back with the bishop, which is what he does in the game, uh, and then I can get this really, really beautiful knight to c5. I can get this c5 square. Uh, and then it comes with the tempo against the queen, too, so that's just extra nice. So uh, you got you got a nice little double attack going on here on the, c, on the a6 uh, pawn. The funny thing about the situation in this position, black makes their own horrible mistake blunder, and they literally play a5. And so you're thinking, wait a minute, like, isn't that just knight takes b7? It is. <laughs> and so Manny kind of took the knight and kind of hovered it around the queen. And then he, you know, his player, his opponent realized his mistake. And so he allowed him to take the move back, you know, being a good sport. Um, so he went ahead and allowed him to take that back and play queen to b6. So we see bishop taking a6, rook to a8, and then we see queen to e2. Uh, and then after bishop to e7, which is a really nice challenging move, uh, because black is trying to just take uh, this defender of this you know, a6 bishop off the board uh, with this. So you have to be very careful what you do. Uh, so Manny Pacquiao decides he's going to go ahead and play bishop to b7. Um, so that allows rook to a3. So, you know, black is actually spotting like the best move in the position. Um, and you still have an issue of this bishop taking uh, because, uh, you know, once you take this off the board, something like this, uh, at some point, maybe, you know, taking this, the rook would take back or something, the bishop would be hanging. So you got to be still be careful in this position. So the knight goes ahead and takes on e6. Yeah, pawn takes e6, bishop takes c6, and then we got queen to b4. I mean, you can also win bishop to taking b4 too. It's kind of the same difference. Um, it's about the same equality level. So, But we do see queen taking b4. And then we see bishop to d7. We got queen to b uh, d6. We got queen to b5. We got rook to a7. Uh, we got bishop to c6. Now, something that was actually kind of interesting to play in the position would have been bishop to c8. Just simply because, like, I mean, there is no take on the c8. Uh, there is no take on the c8 bishop. Uh, and you are starting to try to set up your own little rook to c6 situation, trying to kick the queen and uh, take advantage of this backward pawn here. Um, but, we, like I said, we do see bishop to c6. And black starts playing pretty aggressively, you know, rook to b8. Uh, we got queen to d3, got rook to c7, knocking white back. So we see uh, bishop to a4. So the rook takes on c1, rook takes on c1, and we see king to f7. And this is actually just blunders the pawn on h7. Uh, so Manny Pacquiao has the ability just to snap this pawn off here. For some reason, I guess he felt like he was in some kind of danger with his king, or he wanted to make sure that he had some breathing room. So he went ahead and went g g3, which, you know, like I said, was kind of unnecessary. You know, he could have just went ahead and took the, the pawn over here. Uh, and then we see rook to b6. And then now we see queen takes uh, h7. Uh, we got queen to e5. Uh, and then we have uh, a, uh, let me see, where is the thing at? Yes, uh, we have a, uh, like, <laughs> peace losing blunder uh, <laughs> by uh, Pacquiao, which is rook to, uh, to c8. Uh, and I won't have you guys stop the video um, unless you want to uh, before we go forward. Um, you know, to see what is wrong with this move uh, and how it allows black to basically win a piece. But I'll just tell you guys real quick. Um, basically, um, yeah, this is not the move queen to f5. The move is queen to a1 with check. Uh, and uh, it forks this bishop and this king. And so that's uh, that's the nightmare of the move that he made. Um, so after the king would have to go to g2, you see queen to a4 and you just want a complete entire piece. Uh, and you're down a pawn, but you have a piece. So, I mean, that's pretty much what Pacquiao missed. And I really just kind of feel like he was looking at this, you know, this section of the board, you know, really over here, pretty much from here over. So I don't really even feel like he even looked at that square or looked at that side of the board or that bishop at all, because he just was really focused on this attack here. But anyway, we saw queen to f5. Uh, and then we see, uh, actually, no, that's, uh, yes, but... Instead of rook to c8, um, if you guys want to go ahead and pause the video now um, and see what uh, what move black uh, white actually has um, that is just completely demolishing for for uh, for white. Instead of rook to c8, which hangs the bishop, um, see what you guys have in your mind is uh, the best possible move for white in this position. Okay, cool. So the best possible move in this position uh, is actually the bishop sacrifice e8. So if you found bishop to e8. Uh, then um, you're just a G. You're a gangster. Um, you understand that you know you're knocking the queen away, or you're knocking the king away, so the queen can kind of get in, and the rook can get in. So you might see something like you know king would take on e8. You see queen to e g8 would check, bishop to f8, rook to c8, king to d7, and then rook would take f7, f8, uh, and then you're just having a lot of problems, you know, with this king being so open that this king is actually a little bit safer 
uh, than, uh, you know, Black's King is. Um, because even after something like that, uh, you know, you don't have any further checks because the Rook is covering that, so you're good to go. So, um, but then, uh, you know, like I said, after Rook to C8, we saw Queen to F5, we saw Bishop to F, Bishop to E8, uh, and then the King came down to F6. And then we see Queen to H4 with check, forces Queen to G5 uh, almost. The Queen comes to D4, and as you guys can see, this is a this is a double attack. Um, so uh, Manny Pacquiao is going to be picking up his Rook. So the Queen comes to E5, and then we see Queen taking B6. Uh, and uh, as you can see, Manny is just up a Rook. Uh, and so we see D4, uh, and we see Queen to B2. Um, it was possible just to take here and just simplify everything and trade it off. Um, it was uh, possible also to do what he did, which is Queen to B2. But uh, the most dangerous move in the position was actually Queen to B1, uh, and that is just you know that is just setting up a direct you know Queen to G6 checkmate. Uh, so the Queen would block after we see E4, Queen coming to F3. We see Rook to C7 because you can't move the Bishop because you'll be dropping, uh, like I said, if you try to attack, you'll be dropping the queen like this. And this is not where you wanna be. So like I said, after queen to b2, Manny Pacquiao just figures he'd have some fun. So we see bishop to c5, rook to c5. We see uh, queen taking c5, queen taking e d4 with check, queen taking d4, pawn taking d4. Uh, and then black is trying to step uh, close to this pawn, but he needs this square to do so. Uh, and uh, after king to f5, Manny Pacquiao says, well, I'm not giving you none of that. You're gonna uh, you're gonna be stuck, and so we see g5, h3, uh, e5, pawn takes e5, king takes e5, king to g2, king to f5, king to f3, g4, pawn takes g4, and it is in this position that Manny Pacquiao's opponent does resign the game, uh, and just just because I mean you just look at the board, uh, there's just way too many pieces that White has. Like this is not even like remotely drawable at all. Um, if these were all rook pawns, then that would be a way that it would be a draw even with a bishop uh, because this is the wrong colored bishop for this square. So that would actually be like a funny draw. Um, I'm interested. I'm, I'm seeing if maybe I'll ever do that at some point in the future. But all right. Mary Ming Salamat Po, a King Maga Kaibagan or a Kong Maga Hagala uh, and Magandang Umaga, Magandang Kapon, Maaya, Maayong Buntog, uh, Maayong Hapon uh, for you guys that are coming up. Uh, hopefully I've spoken, uh, you know, Cebuano somewhat legitimately. Um, I'll be working on that. I'll be working on, you know, more Tagalog, of course, for you guys. Um, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. Ingat lagi mabu hi to you guys. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. I appreciate it.